The finale of Polygon YouTube series Carboys released last month and completely exploded how I think about what Let's Play series can do. What had started as a fairly typical, albeit very funny, Let's Play series had, by the end, turned into something with real, narrative, and emotional density. Something substantial and engaging enough to bring myself and numerous others who tuned into the finale to tears. Let's take a look at how it got there. Carboys is a video series centered on the vehicle simulation game BeamNG.Drive. While the game was originally meant for hardcore driving sim enthusiasts, hosts Nick Robinson and Griffin McElroy realized that the strikingly robust softbody physics engine facilitated some truly bizarre graphical displays when messed with in the right way. The first episode, released in August of 2016, starts off fairly tame with Nick and Griffin crashing trucks and cars, but by the end of the episode, they manage to break their vehicle to the point that parts of it become in spanning rays of stretched polygon that clip through the ground and reach skyward forever. Things continue on at a pretty stable pace until Nick and Griffin discover the school bus, which marks the true beginning of Carboy's canon with the introduction of Busto. The following episodes become a network of recurring characters, concepts, and narrative threads like the Sunchips Place, the Ovosphere, Busto 2.0, Ball, and the reality-consuming Blob, all existing in a weird space somewhere between running joke and legitimate narrative canon. This all culminates in what is the only instance of a thematically satisfying conclusion to a Let's Play series that I've ever experienced. Released in mid-May, the final installment of Carboys pulls together all of the disparate running gag slash plot threads and delivers a reality-shattering, emotionally gripping finale that, with the help of some sharp editing and background music choices on Nick's part, reaches truly filmic status. This cap to the series was met with a positive reception, the 10,000 plus thumbs up ratings being countered by a paltry 24 thumbs down, and the aforementioned video comments indicating I wasn't alone in my tearful response to the series ending. I believe that both the comedy and the drama of Carboys is facilitated by its host knack for both creating and guiding emergent narratives. In the context of video games, emergent narratives are non-scripted stories that arise from a person interacting with a system of game mechanics and rules. Think less story cutscenes and more story you tell your friends about the weird way you managed to kill some moblins in Breath of the Wild. BeamNG.Drive is rife with these sorts of narratives, especially when the players are as exploratory as Nick and Griffin. What makes Carboys so special, though, is that the hosts aren't content just to make comedic observations and continue on. At their best, our boys can zero in on something with some deep narrative potential, a bus model that includes a fully articulated and also stuck to his seat bus driver, for example, and riff on it in a way that simultaneously makes us laugh and builds narrative threads that can be revisited later in the series. This forming and redeployment of story elements is what builds the relatively consistent Carboys canon. It isn't enough to simply find and follow opportunities for narrative. What truly elevates the best moments of the series is Nick's keen sense for audio editing. Carboys initially had no background music, but early on adopted Claire de Lune to great effect as a de facto theme song. The composition's elegant and lilting piano melodies accent lovely segments of slow-motion cars sailing through the air and are contrasted to great comedic effect with the subsequent scenes of absolute destruction. Through the series' run, Nick experiments with different musical cues, using Metal Gear Solid 2's creepy Arsenal gear music to lend an uneasy edge to certain physics-breaking moments, the main theme from American Beauty to add a sort of self-mocking, sort of sincere sense of awe, and his masterful choice of ending music, which I'll address a bit later on. There there are countless examples of less ostentatious but equally important sound cues throughout the series, like the small but noticeable echo filter put on Nick and Griffin's voices when they go underwater that build a textured, convincing world. This virtuosic juggling of different narrative threads, in-jokes, self-references, and post-production sound layering all coalesce in the final episode. After discovering a well-hidden dimension-breaking wormhole in the map they've been exploring for the past few episodes, Nick and Griffin decide to go down the vortex and try to find some sort of hidden power to defeat the nefarious blob. They drive their car into the mouth of the wormhole and soon after accidentally spawn the blob right behind them. What follows is a kaleidoscopic journey through a mind-bending planar expanse of low-res textures on top of fractalic polygonal nonsense folding in on itself. Nick and Griffin get a bit quieter and noticeably less jolly popular here, and the dramatic background music that only a few episodes ago could have been written off as a winking send-up of self-serious arthouse films now feels resolutely sincere and weirdly appropriate. 
After a while of this, the car reaches an endless gray expanse. Griffin says, Where are you? Where's Nick? 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 Oh god, is it just me? Nick? Nick, are you still in here? Which at first feels like a throwaway joke, but then Nick says, Griffin? Griffin, can you hear me? The screen then fades out and cuts to black and credits roll as Oyo's sweet, sad song, Youth Day, acts as the closing theme song. We're left without any resolution to what was ostensibly a gag, a sudden, heavy sincerity dropped upon us. This is masterful use of meta-narrative. The cinematic gesture breaks the main conceit of the series, the idea that Nick and Griffin are two boys sitting at desks and watching a screen. They are suddenly textual characters within the reality that they've created and have been commentating over. All of that reality as well, what up to this point had been a self-consistent network of running jokes hinting towards serious canon, crystallizes into real, resonant drama. And all of the hours you as a viewer have spent watching these doofuses break cars and fight omnipotent impotent crash test dummies, the sheer weight of that time bears down on this moment. These people you've laughed with, who you've shared all of this time with, are suddenly subsumed into the narrative that they created. And what could have easily been a funny but ephemeral joke about being stuck in a time loop becomes a legitimately terrifying and tragic ending for the two guys we've been hanging out with for the last half year. And yet, this doesn't invalidate the goofiness of the show. Rather, it turns it into a fascinating Schrodinger's cat of genre. Carboys exists in a super state where many of the recurring elements act both as joke and as real, weighted piece of narrative information, forming a series that is at once a joyful, riotous comedy and a meditative, melancholic drama. Following the final episode, a slew of reactionary videos and fan art made their way onto Tumblr, Twitter, and YouTube. A lot of them drew comparison between the Carboys finale and End of Evangelion, there was a surprisingly lovely AMV-style tribute set to Porter Robinson's shelter, and even a film theory-style story analysis. But my favorite by far has to be a short animated video created by none other than Louis Zong, the artist behind the title cards that appear in later Carboys episodes. Set to Claire de Lune, the animated short depicts in a soft, rounded style the last few seconds of the finale. Griffin and Nick reach out wordlessly toward one another, and then are temporally and spatially lost to one another. I bring up these offerings from the fan community because, well, the fan community largely helped define Carboy canon. Fan suggestions facilitating optimal destruction, comment section and subreddit lore discussions, even an excellent fan animated video deemed canon by Polygon and included in the official series playlist. There are multiple multiple instances of fans playing an active part in the construction of the Carboys universe. In this light, post-series fan contributions wield a certain canonical weight. Zong's video is affecting not only because it is given meaning by the main series, but because the series is given meaning by it as well. The animated short sharpens and interprets the ending of Carboys. The meta-narrative of Nick and Griffin creating a story out of a game they are playing, and the meta-narrative of the people watching said story interact and inform one another in a strange and lovely dance of meaning-making. Carboys is a lot of things. It's a comedy show about two guys riffing on how goofed up robust physics engines can get. It's an existential horror show about eldritch forces and unknowable geometry. It's a mythic tragedy about two heroes who nobly sacrifice their spatial and temporal being to steal away a world-eating monster. Sometimes it's even a show about cars doing fairly pedestrian stunts and exploratory driving. But above all else, Carboys is a show about two boys building a story out of the weird, messed up stuff they create in a video game. A couple of friends in a car dealing with the huge, terrifying, hilarious messes they make, and the sometimes joyful, sometimes melancholy, always affecting beauty they leave in their wake.